actually from Hawaii. It is, and I've had it for 25 years, and it hasn't faded yet. So 25 I'm amazed. years? Yeah. I've had it re-sewn about three times as the arms have fallen off, but the quality of uh, stuff coming out of Hawaii in the 1970s was obviously at a high level. Is that yeah. right? <laughs> it was. Have you ever written a poem about that? What? So Hawaii in the 70s? Yeah, you should do. <laughs> I, I, I think, yeah, <laughs> I have, Not yet, not yet. Yeah. So that poem we just heard you reading then, is that, re is that one of your favourites or is it your absolute favourite? Well, it's the best groundbreaking poem because it, uh, it allows men to imagine themselves wearing thongs and it allows women with men to allow themselves to... Um, imagine their men wearing thongs and everybody suddenly becomes less serious about themselves. <laughs> yeah, it's a talking point, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It is a talking yeah. point. What was your inspiration? Take us right back. When, when did, how did you get into poetry in the first place? What was the thing for you? Well, I guess the, the, the origin of it was being read poetry by my mother when I was a child, and I think that's probably the most important time for anybody to get into poetry, particularly rhyming verse, which is what I'm into. Um, and then it resurfaced when I was a student at Salford University and I, I answered a, uh, an assignment in verse and it went down really well and then it, it just moved on from there and I started doing it live and then record small record company picked it up and then it started rolling and then I ended up with a, a huge record deal. And that's the, when it really went wrong. It went... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably... Yeah, the, the, what happened? Well, I think um, I suddenly became an international media story. And uh, for a, for a 26-year-old, full of beans performer um, to suddenly be exposed to such enormous media attention. So it went from being doing OK, doing pretty well, to um, stalkers, paparazzi, limousines, uh, uh, newspapers from all over the world phoning up, being sort of farmed out and, and doing too many interviews and just becoming probably... Um, overwrought by the whole thing, and then every single person in the record company was sacked in, in one fell swoop, and I walked away from from the deal. And, so, did, yeah. did the effect on that was did that stop you being creative? I mean, had that had an impact on your writing and your in your work? Well, I went and lived in a wood for three years. Three years. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, <laughs> and ve uh, uh, renovated a Victorian spring system. So I just sort of dug holes and tried not to think about it. But I think the effect that it had on me was, you know quite close to, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about what mental illness is in recent times, and I definitely, it took me somewhere quite dark. Back in the right place now? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, can I just say, my very favourite poem in the book is about chocolate digestive. Yes, it's going down a storm. Is that one of the most popular? Yeah, but I do it with, the, if I do it live, I, I have a survey of the audience of which um, members of the audience like dark chocolate and which members like uh, milk chocolate. Yeah. And it's, it's quite a, it's quite Conclusion a big issue. Conclusion is that well, it's a big dark issue. Dark chocolate... Brexit-sized issue. Yeah. Dark chocolate's slightly better at the end. Well, you see, and you say that to the wrong audience, and, oh. uh, you know, and then things can go, go downhill go rapidly. Booing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there was booing. Booing the biscuits. There was booing in Putney on... Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> Don't like heckling. Life. Would you have thought it, that the audience in Putney it. were all into milk chocolate digestives? Murray, thank you very much <laughs> indeed. Lovely to see you this morning. Thank My you. pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, we're back on breakfast tomorrow, aren't we, from...